Written by Dismal Apparition. Somebody kill that fucking alarm. Cartwright marched the pack of guards forward with military precision. Peter sprinted out of the cell block. Both the alarm and screaming convulsions ceased a moment later. Get your ass up, son, Cartwright barked. This is the second time I've caught you sitting on the job. There won't be a third. Yes, sir. I snapped to attention, the need to follow orders superseding my fears. And this is the second time I told you not to call me sir. Now if you'll kindly get out of my way, this inmate is coming with me. I turned my head back toward Frankie. He was sitting in the corner of his cell, shoulders slack and blood gushing from his face. Russo attacked me, Cartwright. I pointed to Frankie's blood on my uniform. I popped him so hard I think I broke his nose. I'm taking him to medical and then making him clean my uniform by hand. This inmate has a prior engagement, Gonzalez. He raised his eyebrow. We don't allow inmates to miss appointments in this facility. I understand that, Cartwright, but I assume you don't want them to assault guards without proper punishment either. It's my first shift on the job. What will the other inmates think if I don't deal with this? Cartwright's glare turned my mouth dry. The guard unit towered behind him like stone statues, eagerly awaiting their leader's order. He took his time surveying the cell, letting his gaze fall from Frankie's beaten face over to my bloodied uniform. Hmm. Well, I suppose you're right. The inmate's appointment will have to be rescheduled. Do what you have to do, just make sure it ain't nothing medical can't fix. I heard Frankie stand up behind me. All right, boys, change of plans. Carraig commanded his minions. Let's move on the next cell block. I watched them march off without blinking, holding Frankie back with my right hand behind me. Peters glared towards us from the desk for a moment before following after Cartwright. What the fuck did you just do, big guy? Frankie coughed. I think I just saved your life. How about a bit of appreciation? Yeah, at the expense of yours. What the fuck were you thinking? We gotta get out of here. I know, you're pretty banged up. We need to get to med- I mean, we need to get the fuck out of here. You've been here two friggin' hours and you've already pissed off the warden and the lead sergeant. Guards have gone missing for less. I've dealt with assholes much worse than those two in the Navy. I think I can handle myself. I placed cuffs around his wrists. Now, lead the way to medical. I escorted Frankie down the adjacent corridor. The hallway seemed longer than I remembered. The men who were once silently rocking themselves back and forth were now lying on their backs. The scent of death rushed by my nostrils as we reached the end. One of the inmates had expired. Jesus, I gasped. I need to get a medical team in here ASAP. Don't bother, big guy. They have a crew run through here every couple days to clear out the dead ones. Frankie responded. Frankie, I halted. I've heard so much bullshit from Cartwright, Peters, and now you. Tell me what's going on here. Tell me about the grinder. I need to know. Haven't you heard? Frankie walked forward without facing me. They suck out the prisoners' screams and sell them to a demon. Don't fucking bullshit me, Frankie. Tell me the truth. You owe me that much. I don't owe you shit. Frankie cried as he stopped to face me. You think I know the truth? I have no clue what goes on around here. Take a look around you. It sure as hell ain't nothing good. That dead guy you're so worried about. He was fine until a couple weeks ago when he got picked. When they brought him back, he looked about 30 years older and wouldn't talk. Now look at him. Frankie gazed into me with eyes full of tears. You need to help me get out of here. If not, I'm as dead as he is. You think I'm gonna risk my job for you? My livelihood? 
My wife left me the day I got kicked out of the military. If I don't give her a thousand bucks a month for child support, I'll never see my daughter again. You think somewhere other than this shithole's gonna hire me with a dishonorable discharge? Oh, so that's what this is. Just following orders, right? Right. I growled, pushing him forward. We continued the rest of the walk in silence. I couldn't help but wonder what was really going on in the facility. Demons weren't real, were they? What purpose would a demon have with human screams? And how would Cartwright go about sucking them out? Frankie stopped to face me once more when we arrived at the medical bay door. I just want to say thank you for saving my neck back there, big guy. I got a little worked up, but I do appreciate it. I need one more favor from you, though. I'm not helping you escape, Frankie. Don't ask me again. It's not that. He hesitated. I've got a letter in my back pocket. The medical officers will confiscate it if they find it. It took me two years to find a piece of paper and another three to get a hold of a red marker. Please, just hold it for me while I'm in there. And I won't ask you for nothing else. Fine. I sighed as I uncuffed him. Let's go. I grabbed the letter from Frankie and opened the door. I was immediately hit by a sickly sweet stench of rot and ammonia. Little Frankie. A frighteningly large inmate bellowed out as he approached us. He must have been at least seven feet tall. Is he? Frankie exclaimed while giving him a playful punch in the gut. How many times do I have to tell you not to call me little? How can I help you, sir? Izzy addressed me as he lightly shoved Frankie out of his way. Inmate Russo had a bit of an accident and needs to get cleaned up. Are you the one who takes care of appointments? Not exactly, sir. I'm the facility's medical doctor. Well, how friggin' rude of me. Frankie interrupted. Ismail, this is Officer Gonzalez. He's one of the good ones. Big guy, this is Izzy. He used to be a medical officer in the army back in the day. He got caught patching up wounded enemies, and now he's stuck here with the rest of us. Why did you do that? I had to crane my neck to meet his eyes. Didn't that go against your orders? Sometimes doing the right thing is more important than following an order. There's the new guy. A blonde, stocky officer approached me from the doorway with the voice of a lifelong smoker. He was half a foot shorter than me, but his body was an intimidating mixture of muscle and fat. He looked like he could punch a brick into a diamond. The name's Williams. He reached forward. Peter said you'd be down here. Nice to meet you. I shook his hand. Is he looking for me or something? Nah, not at all. I just came to give you a grand tour. Follow me. Williams led me back to the hallway. Izzy started cleaning up Frankie as we left. So you've already seen our main units, Williams said as we walked. I'm going to show you where the power supply room is in case you ever need to shut off the alarm. What's up with that thing anyway? It's gone off two times since I've been here. The generator down here is from the 1930s, big, ugly diesel thing. If too much power is consumed at once, the alarm gets tripped. All we have down here is light bulbs and computers. What could possibly be using so much energy? I'm gonna give you a word of advice. William stopped and turned toward me. Don't ask questions around here. You'll end up with a target on your back. I was curious, just like you when I first started. Almost got my ass canned. I got a dishonorable discharge, so I would have been shit out of luck. Wait, you got a dishonorable too? You don't get it, do you? He scoffed. We all got one. Me, Peters, even old man Willie up in the shack. 
You think Cartwright hangs out at the military trials because he's looking for the best of the best? He's trying to find guys who don't have any other options. He scanned the corridor before continuing. And another thing, don't get too close to these inmates. The boss man and Peter's already got their eye on you after that stunt you pulled. What stunt? Taking Russo to medical when he got picked. That inmate has it coming after what he did. What did he do? I asked, raising my brow. He tried to escape a few months ago. He stabbed a guard in the process. The guy's been on medical leave ever since. You're his replacement. Did he tell you why he's in here? Yeah, he did. He said he read a congressman's mind at a cocktail party and got busted for it. He started walking down the hall once more. Oh, it was more than that, brother. The guy is a con artist. Russo would pretend to read some guy's mind to distract a crowd while his buddies pickpocketed the wealthy looking ones. One day they stole a USB stick from a ranking member of the intelligence community. His biggest mistake was plugging it into a computer to see what was on it. That's what landed his ass in here. Are you saying he lied to me? Are you saying you're surprised an inmate lied to a CO? He chuckled. We were stopped by a sudden convulsion below us. The tremor rocked the ground so hard that specks of dust rained from the ceiling. The medical bay door burst open down the hall. An inmate started sprinting towards us with blood spurting out of his side as a deep cacophony of screams echoed around the facility. Looks like no power room after all. Let's go. William shouted as he ran toward the prisoner. I chased after him with the ground still trembling with aftershocks, the lights flickering. William shoulder tackled the inmate just as the sirens began to blare, painting the hall in an all too familiar red hue. I stumbled forward, startled by the sudden commotion. The echo of rushed footsteps called out from behind me. What the fuck are you doing, Gonzalez? Help me! William shouted as he struggled to detain the crazed inmate. I rushed over and grabbed the inmate's arm, snapped out of my trance by the sudden command. He had a large gash running down his left side. It was so deep that some of his intestines were spilling out. We slipped and slid over a pool of blood as we grappled him into submission. Peters barreled towards us as we held the inmate down, leading a group of four guards. Out of the way. He screamed, barely audible over the blaring siren. The guard unit descended upon the seizing inmate, shoving us out of their way. One guard held each of his limbs as Peters pulled out his baton and prepared to strike. He's not fighting anymore, I shouted, placing myself in front of Peters. You better fall in line. Peters threw me against the wall, holding me in place with the baton in my throat. Or you're next. His dark circled eyes glowed a fiery red with every spin of the siren's lights. I shoved him away from me and sprinted towards the medical bay. I had to make sure Frankie was okay. I heard a sickening crack ring out above the siren as Peters began striking the inmate. My lungs were burning in my chest by the time I reached the medical bay. My heart was pounding with anxiety and I pushed through the door just as the alarms were silenced. I found Frankie trying to shim his way up some sort of service elevator cable at the far end of the room. What are you doing, Frankie? I called, trying to catch my breath. I'm getting out of here, big guy. It's a long climb, but I think I can make it. You should come with me. You're not safe here. Trust me. Trust you, I shouted as I ran over and pulled him down. I did trust you, and you lied to me. Get off me, he yelled, pushing me away. Or what, you're gonna stab me like you did that other guard? Frankie hesitated a moment before continuing. I got a family too, you know? My ma back home in Jersey. I did what I had to do to get back to her. Look at this place, big guy. Dead bodies in cells, guards beating inmates. You can smell the stench of death in this room, can't you? 
My hands tremble as I gripped my fists, looking around the room. Frankie was right. I took a deep breath, the overwhelming scent of rot tickling my senses. I'm getting out of here, big guy. With or without you. He started climbing up the elevator cable once again. Watched him in silence as he climbed higher and higher, gritting my teeth. Just before his feet pulled out of sight onto the next floor, I heard a thick South Carolina accent call out from behind me. Going somewhere, inmate? Pull that goddamn inmate down from there, Carray commanded. I stood frozen in place, my toes clenched in my boots. That's an order. A burning sensation tingled through my nerves. I rushed forward and pulled Frankie down with a hard thud. Ow, what the fuck, big guy? He squealed. Peters burst through the door with his four stooges. The mere sight of them caused Frankie to curl into the fetal position. That's a good boy. Always following orders. Cartwright said as he moved toward me and placed a hand on my shoulder. But you should have let him go. Maybe he'd come back to save you. Sharp crack of Peter's baton sent my body into a seizure. I heard the shot at the base of my skull before I felt it. I fell to the ground, convulsing face to face with who I realized was the only person I could have trusted. What the fuck? Frankie cried as he wiggled away from the guards. What'd you do that for? Get Russo back to his cell. Cartwright ordered. Stars danced to my vision as the room faded into darkness. Cartwright knelt next to my face to ensure I heard his next words clearly. And prep our new inmate for the grinder. I must have passed out because the next thing I remember was being dragged face down with my hands cuffed in front of me. I had a coppery taste in my mouth and my vision was still blurry. The sensation forced me to vomit. Let me go. I tried to wriggle free but my captor's grip was too firm. I'm a correctional officer. I work here. Not anymore. It was William's voice. He was dragging my 190 pound body at walking pace and didn't sound the slightest bit exhausted by it. I told you not to go asking any questions, not to disobey or cause problems. Look where it got you. I clawed at the floor in desperation. My fingernails made a high pitched scratching noise before two of them lifted from my skin and the other was completely torn off. I clenched my hands at the sudden searing pain of the exposed nerve. Stop fighting. William's pace slowed momentarily. It'll only make them enjoy it. It'll all be over soon. I have a family, I yelled. They'll notice I'm gone and they'll call the police. Cartwright doesn't leave loopholes. He's drafting your death certificate now. Probably gonna say you were shivved by an inmate on your first day. He'll offer your ex-wife a half a million dollars as a death benefit. She'll happily take it and never question a thing. I tried to pull away, but Williams tightened his grip on my ankle. It felt like it was being squeezed by a vice grip. I pushed up on my cuffed hands and he tugged on my legs so hard I busted flat on my face. I felt my cheek drag across the floor, leaving a snail's line of warm blood and teeth bits. I closed my eyes and thought about the inmate back in Guantanamo Bay. How he must have felt exactly how I felt. Helpless. Terrified. Regretful. Tears burned my eyelids as I realized I was just like Williams. I never hit the inmates in Gitmo, but I didn't do anything to help them either. I never made any reports or filed any grievances. I just stood there and watched. A good boy, just like Cartwright said, always following orders. I'd been complacent for the second time in my life. 
The first got me a false accusation. The latter got me an appointment with the grinder. What is it? I sputtered. At least tell me what the grinder is. A deep sigh escaped William's lips as I heard a large metal door creak open. You'll learn soon enough, he said as he lifted me over his shoulder. I just wish it didn't have to be this way. Williams carried me to a decaying white operating room. A massive diesel-powered generator sat near the open dirt tunnel at the far end of the compartment. The tunnel's opening resembled a bear's cave. The tiled floor was battered to the brink of deterioration and stained brown from decades-old blood. He placed me onto an ancient operating table, removed the handcuffs, and strapped me in place. I yanked my hands against the straps until my skin tore and I jolted my body back and forth, slamming my head against the cold metal table until I ran out of breath. You don't have to do this, I exhaled. Yes, I do, he responded. Or I'll end up exactly where you are now. Williams walked over to the wall and slammed a red button. The operating room spurred to life. A massive surgeon's light flickered on above me, casting a spotlight on my body as Cartwright walked into the room with Izzy, the medical director. I hate to do this to you, son, Cartwright said, but you've caused too much trouble in my facility, you see. You had some real potential and it just pains me to see it go to waste. Cartwright meandered around the room, casually picking up medical devices as he walked. Now you'll finally get to meet her. All your questions will be answered. Inmate Ismail is gonna get you prepped while Williams and I get the generator running. Izzy lurched forward, frowning as he cut my clothes free with medical shears. I arched my back at the sudden touch of the cold metal on my bare skin. He pulled a pre-filled syringe from a drawer beside the operating table and tightened a band around my left bicep. No. None of that. Cartwright grabbed his wrist. I want him to feel it. My eyes watered as I watched Cartwright and Williams leave the room. I'm sorry. Izzy whispered as he slipped a pill into my mouth. This is the best I can do. Chew it so it works quickly. I shuddered at the chalky, metallic taste the pill left in my mouth. The effect was almost immediate. My head felt heavy and the world turned into a calming blur. Izzy set the unused syringe on the bedside table and followed after Cartwright and Williams. I lolled my head back and forth, pulling weakly at the restraints. My breathing slowed. A warm sensation tingled from my feet all the way up to my head. It was euphoric. Chains clanked together as the diesel generator whirred and buzzed into action. The sound was deafening. It violently shook and shuddered, shaking the ground and ceiling around it. Dust fell like raindrops from above. A cacophony of screams poured out from the tunnel, awakened by the sudden explosion of noise. The warm sensation turned cold in my veins, straightening my posture. I pulled and kicked, slamming my body against the restraints as the screams grew louder, moving their way out of the tunnel. Footsteps, pounding faster and faster. A bitter chill poured into the room. Every light clicked out at once, blanketing me in darkness. A massive, spindly creature appeared at the tunnel opening. It clacked hungrily as it crawled towards me on all fours. I could barely make out its humanoid frame in the darkness, but I could see that it had a surgeon's mask over its skeletal face. It tilted its head back and a hundred deafening screams poured out of it all at once. My body trembled under the creature's hot breath. I tugged my left wrist in desperation, 
barely feeling the sensation of the skin degloving from my hand as it pulled free from the restraint. I reached my now skinless hand and pulled the mask away with a wet slap. A gaping hole rested where its mouth should be. It slowly bent towards me, its gaping maw acting as a vacuum. I started to scream, but the air was sucked out of me. My bloodied left hand flailed helplessly for a moment before, weakly falling to my side. I fought to inhale, but every ounce of breath was being sucked out. I felt a sharp, intense line of pain slide down the left side of my torso. I looked down to see the creature cutting an incision into my body with a razor-like claw. I couldn't fight anymore. I looked into the creature's empty, expressionless eyes, hoping for a miracle. My stomach bloated as it slid its bony hand inside of me, pulling out my intestines and throwing them beside me with a wet plop. I squeezed my eyes shut and tried to remember the euphoric feeling from before. I tried to remember my daughter's face. I tried to remember any happy memory I could. Still, the sensation of having the scream sucked out of my throat was too overwhelming to focus on anything else. A heaviness crept over me. I felt the creature hesitate for a split second, just before the alarm blared into the room. The creature jolted away and scurried back into the tunnel, intimidated by the explosion of noise. The alarm was silenced almost as quickly as it started, the generator dying at the same time. The lights flickered back on. I turned my head to the side and puked. My head fell to the left to see the metal door slam open. My eyes crossed, double vision blurring as I failed to focus on the person shuffling into the room. Please. I mumbled as I started to lose consciousness. Just kill me already. The blurry figure leaned toward my face and whispered as the restraints clicked free. I'm gonna get you out of here, big guy. Thank you for listening. You can probably handle another horror story, right?